That would be like somebody goes to Auburn, tours the campus, checks it out, gets to talk to the coaches and everything, signs a, a deal and, and winds up going to and committing to Auburn, becomes a student there, gets on the football team, all of this stuff. And then right after he uh, the first game, he protests War Eagle. Dude, you knew what you were getting into when you signed up for it. You are a representative of the university when you go onto a stage like that and play football for Auburn University. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. No, you messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. The Olympic hammer throwing competition ended in an interesting way the other day because Gwen Berry, who came in third place in the hammer throwing contest, by the way, they call it hammer throwing. I don't like the fact that they call it hammer throwing because it's really like a ball and chain kind of thing. I didn't even know this was a sport. I'm just going to be completely honest. I'd never heard of it before. Apparently it's one of those like obscure track and field sports. Uh, but I really would have rather just them thrown like framing hammers at a target and try to hit it as close as possible. Kind of like axe throwing. See, that's a much cooler sport. And I think that we should sue hammer throwing for false advertisement. <laughs> but no, there, there really is a, a sport called hammer throwing and it's in the women's division. And, uh, she got very angry when the national anthem was played. Apparently she's done this before. Her name's Gwen Berry. She placed third in this American track and field trials. And when the, uh, when the anthem, uh, when the anthem started playing, she turned away from the flag and, you know, put on her little pouty face. And so you can see that in this picture right here, this is courtesy of NPR. So yeah, you can see her. There she is on her third place stand looking all dejected and sourpuss and has some kind of weird black makeup thing going on with her lips. I don't understand what that's about, but regardless, it's, you know, really more of an ad hominem attack. It's not really substantive, but yeah, there she is just kind of like angry and holding her flowers down and being a sourpuss about all this thing. So obviously not somebody that is real fond of the anthem here, but what was, it's absurd that somebody that wants to be on the American team acts this way when the national anthem is played. But what was even more absurd is her reaction to it. You can see that in this article from the Associated Press. She says, quote, I feel like it was a setup and they did it on purpose, Barry said at the timing of the anthem. Right. You're at the American track and field trials to be on Team USA and you think that they played the song specifically just to tick you off. I'm sure that's what was happening here. I mean, it's, it's so stupid. That would be like being at Disney World, and if you don't like Mickey Mouse, it's like, I'm sure that they had Mickey come up and wave at me just because I can't stay. That is a person that is living in a me-centric universe. Because if you were to apply just a couple of principles of basic logic, you would ask yourself, which is the more likely explanation? The fact that the American track and field trials that you're trying out for plays the national anthem a lot because that's kind of their thing, their Team USA, or that they saw that you were on the podium at the time and they specifically, because they were targeting you, played the national anthem just to tick you off. Isn't it more likely that Disney World just happened to have Mickey Mouse roaming around because, you know, they're freaking Disney World? And isn't it more likely that the United States track and field trials just played it because that's a thing that they kind of do on a regular basis because, you know, they're the American team? So it's just so silly, but she has such a her-centric view of the universe that she genuinely believes that if this was done, it was done specifically to target her and to tick her off, and they were doing it just to mess with her. Unfortunately, you know, for her, there's not a bit of truth to this because if you look elsewhere in the same report by the Associated Press, U.S. track and field spokeswoman woman Susan Hazard said, quote, the national anthem was scheduled to play at 5.20 p.m. today. We didn't wait until the athletes were on the podium for the hammer throw awards. The national anthem played is played every day according to a previously published schedule. On Saturday, the music started 
at 525. So this was something that was already scheduled. They had it in the schedule and they were going and they played it. They they weren't waiting for her to get to to this. It's just so stupid. This woman literally believes that everyone in the universe was just waiting for her to stand on the podium so they could play the American national anthem and, and stick it in her face. And that's just, this is, this is not a serious person. But here's the thing. That is the basic tenet of wokeism, isn't it? That if you are ever offended in any way, you must be a victim. If that was the case, it's because you were victimized and there was somebody that has it out for you that specifically wanted to mess with you especially if you're black. I mean, this is the same thing that we saw with Bubba Wallace, right? That there's a noose hanging up in his garage. And even after presented with the evidence and even after they were like, uh, yeah, we did an investigation and that was put up in several different garage lots. It's, it's really just a pull down for the garage doors. Oh, and by the way, they put it up like a year ago, way before they even knew that you were going to be in that stall. And then he goes up, despite knowing all of this, to the podium and says, no, no, it was a straight-up noose. It was a noose. No, there were not people specifically going out of their way to target you. You're not a victim. It was a unfortunate happenstance in Bubba Wallace's case, even though nobody you know, would have thought of it as a noose if, if one of his managers hadn't gone to the garage and filled his head with this nonsense. And it's the same thing with Gwen Berry. The universe doesn't revolve around you. They didn't do this specifically to get at you for any reason. It's just the way that it happened to shake out that the anthem was already scheduled at this point and it played while you happened to be on the podium. But let's go ahead and look at the next part of this article uh, because this is where she kind of asserts her whole premise and, and what she's trying to stand up for, I guess, in her mind. So here she says, My purpose and my mission is bigger than sports, Barry said. I'm here to represent those who died due to systematic racism. That's the important part. That's why I'm going. That's why I'm here today. So we'll just temporarily ignore the insanity of the idea that people are dying because of systematic racism today. I've done multiple, multiple shows on how this is a convenient lie that is pro pro uh, propagated by the left, how there's no truth to it, how, for example, if, you know, I'll just give one here. Um, if you're a white person, you're actually significantly more likely to be killed by a police officer than a black person. If you look at the proportionality at the rate that they uh, th th they commit crimes, you're actually about the same amount of likelihood as a black person uh, being killed by a police officer in that scenario. Or how the fact that there were only four unarmed black people in the entire country out of you know 327 million that died at the hands of police officers last year. So, I mean, we could go into all of that, but let's just for a second look into this uh, claim that she makes a little bit earlier, which is this is her purpose. She's, she's not doing this because she's an athlete. She's not doing it for the sake of sports or to compete. She's doing it because of activism. Okay, if you want to be an activist, just go be an activist. It's real simple. I'm not saying that you can't have political beliefs, and I'm not even saying you can't be an activist in your off time if you want to be an athlete. I think that you're being an activism, uh, you're being in activism for the wrong reasons. I think you're on the wrong side of activism. I think you should be an activist for other ideas, obviously, but whether I agree with you or not is really immaterial. If you want to be an activist, just do that on your own time. That's all we're saying. You know, I'm a pretty politically active person. You know where I don't really act as a political political activist at all of my other jobs. You know, when I'm working for Fountain University, managing the dorms, that doesn't have anything to do with my politics. And I don't use that as a venue to further my political desires. And so this is the same thing that we're talking about here. If you want to be an activist, either go off and be a professional activist and quit the sports thing, or you also have the option, because this is a free country, do your activism when you're not acting as an athlete, as a representative for the United States of America. When you look at great guys, and we were just talking actually about one of them, using him as an example, guys like Willie Mays, Jackie Robinson, or the one that we just used, Hank Aaron. These guys did affect some political change, and they did change the hearts and minds of people on things regarding race. 
but they didn't do it by being activists while they were on the field. In fact, they avoided that kind of stuff. They were just like, I want to be a good ball player. And I, I want and that in and of itself helped change people's minds about the role that black Americans played and, and their ability to be on equal footing with white people and so on and so forth. That fundamentally altered the way people thought about it, not because they were activists, but because they did the opposite. They were just regular Americans trying to do the best that they could to do their job, just like everybody else. And that is what had an effect on people. They actually tried to stay away from the activism and did a lot more for sort of facilitating political change than this chick's ever going to. And the funny thing about all of this is this is just an absurd political stunt. It's just like Colin Kaepernick. Think about this. This lady, Gwen Berry, came in third, not for the Olympics, for the qualification for the U.S. team in the hammer throwing contest. It's not exactly like, you know, track and field or gymnastics or one of the other really popular Olympic sports. This is a very specific, very obscure Olympic sport. This is the qualification round. And she came in third in that. Now, I'm sure that, you know, I couldn't do that. But my point is, do you know the names of the women that came in first and second? No, you don't. Because the only reason anybody knows who she is is because of this incident. See, she realized that she could get way more publicity being an activist than she could being an athlete because she's not good enough to compete on that stage. Now, maybe, you know, between now and then she trains and wins a gold medal in the Olympics. Okay, great. You're, it's still hammer throwing, but, you know, it's something. It's still an accomplishment. But my point in all of that is this is nothing but a publicity stunt. She's doing it to get attention in the same way that Colin Kaepernick was a mediocre backup NFL quarterback that had the job, you know, about a season before he started his activism, uh, had his job taken from him by another mediocre backup quarterback. I mean, the guy just wasn't putting up good numbers. And the same thing is true here. They can't make it as like, you know, you're not, you're never going to be, at least it seems from her level, you're never going to be a, a Carrie Shrug or a Michael Phelps or somebody like that. And so the only way that you can actually get into the limelight and get some publicity is if you do something dumb and, and ridiculous like this to make headlines. And that's exactly what Colin Kaepernick did. It's exactly what she's doing right now. But what is unfortunate about this is that the White House is now defending this insanity. This is Biden's press secretary, Jen Psaki. And Gwen Barry, who hopes to represent the United States as an Olympian on the hammer throwing uh, events, won a bronze medal at the trials, and then she turned her back on the flag while the anthem played. Does President Biden think that is appropriate behavior for someone who hopes to represent Team USA? Well, uh, Peter, I, I haven't spoken to the president specifically about this, uh, but I know he's incredibly proud to be an American uh, and has great respect for the anthem and all that it represents, especially for our, our men and women serving in uniform all around the world. He would also say, of course, that part of that pride in our country means recognizing there are moments where we are, as a country, haven't lived up to our highest ideals. And it means respecting the right of people granted to them in the Constitution to peacefully protest. Do you notice in all of that that Jen Psaki has this annoying habit of completely not answering the question that she was asked? And I know a lot of press secretaries, secretaries do this. Kaylee, Kaylee McEnany did this from time to time. But it does annoy me that he asked a very specific per, uh, question there. Does President Biden feel that this is appropriate for somebody that is seeking a spot on the U.S. team? And she was like, well, I haven't spoken to the president personally on this. And that's fair. You know, maybe she hasn't. I, I tend to believe her. I have no reason not to believe her when she says that. But then her follow up to that is, well, he believes in the right to protest. OK, but that's not what the question was. The question is, should a person on the American team behave this way? Not does she have a right to do it, because she does. This is a free country. Nobody is saying, as, or at least nobody serious that I'm aware of is saying, well, she ought to be arrested for that. No, we're not saying that. We're not saying she should be persecuted. We're just saying, is this the appropriate response? Is this a correct moral decision for somebody that is supposed to be representing the United States going to the Olympic Games? 
And Jin Saki completely sidesteps that and ignores the actual question to say, well, she has a right to protest. Okay, but nobody's asking that question. Of course she has a right to protest. Answer the question. But anyway, here's the thing. You can't be on Team USA, in my opinion. I think this is grounds for getting kicked off of that team. Not because you're doing something illegal, just because you're supposed to be representing the United States. And if you can't do that and do it proudly, you don't need to be here. And I'm not saying that vindictively again. Winberry can go off and be a political activist professionally if she wants to. That's fine. But this is a really, really dumb way to do it. And you don't disrespect America when you're on Team America. That would be like, in, you know, I'm an Auburn grad. That would be like somebody goes to Auburn, tours the campus, checks it out, gets to talk to the coaches and everything, signs a, a deal and, and winds up going to and committing to Auburn, becomes a student there, gets on the football team, all of this stuff. And then right after he uh, the first game, he protests War Eagle. Dude, you knew what you were getting into when you signed up for it. You are a representative of the university when you go onto a stage like that and play football for Auburn University. You can't do that and be simultaneously against the traditions of Auburn University. Like, this is, it's not as though you were coerced into this. You chose this. And you don't get to choose it and then crap all over it when you get there and expect, well, I don't see what I did wrong. I don't see why everybody's making a big deal about it. Because you're a representative of that organization. And when you're going to represent America at the Olympics, you should be respectful of your own country. You should be proud to be from your own country. If you don't, then you shouldn't be representing it. If you're like, well, America's, like, like she said in a different quote, uh, if you're saying that America disrespects black people, so I disrespected America, and, it, and America doesn't really hold up to what it's supposed to do, like Jen Psaki would say, okay, well, if you believe that, don't represent America. If it's not worth representing, you shouldn't want to be on the team in the first place. Pick one or the other. But see, she, she wants to have her cake and eat it too. She wants to have this stage that she can compete on, but also I don't actually want to represent the thing that I'm supposed to be representing. You don't get to do that. You pick one or the other. And as dumb as what Colin Kaepernick did, at least Colin Kaepernick wasn't playing for Team USA in the NFL. He was playing for the San Francisco 49ers. And so, yeah, his activism was dumb and misguided, and I think that he's wrong for doing it. But at the same time, at least it wasn't something that was directly contradictory to the team that he was representing on that stage. That's exactly what's happening with Gwen Berry. So you have to make that decision. Either America is worth representing, it is worth carrying the flag proudly on your shoulder into that arena to represent the United States of America, or it's not. You can't have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me. I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat.